Now, why is it that when Secretary of State Michael Pompeo talks about China, he only tells half of the story? Now, in today's video, I'm going to be a good American and help out my fellow American citizen, Michael Pompeo, and tell the second half of China's story. I want people to better understand China, and by telling you both sides, I think we're going to be able to better understand what's really happening in China today. You're not going to want to miss today's episode, so let's get started. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Cyrus, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm an American expat that's been living around the world for the past 13 years. Ten of those years were spent in greater China, and if you're new to this channel, we're making weekly vlogs about China and its role in society today. Now, the idea for this video came from a recent tweet from Michael Pompeo. Too much of the Chinese Communist Party's economy is built on the willful disregard for air, land, and water quality. The Chinese people and the world deserve better. Social media is really a double-edged sword. For instance, when the United States government starts sharing images like this, China is responsible for 30% of global plastic pollution. China is the largest emitter of mercury. China is the top emitter of marine debris. China is the largest emitter of greenhouse gases. You see, people do not take the actual time to start researching more about what's actually happening in China in regards to its pollution. We just see these very nice Photoshop images that even have the United States government seal of approval on them, and we simply are being told that China is our greatest enemy. But what is China's side of the story? What is China actually doing to help stop its carbon footprint in the world and actually reduce pollution? Let's tell that side of the story. Now, I started to do some research and came upon this report from the Union of Concerned Scientists, and it details each country's share of CO2 emissions. And we can see from this graph that China represents 28% of the worldwide CO2 emissions. And if we look further on this graph, we can see the 20 countries that emitted the most carbon dioxide in 2018, and China, again, is at the top of that list, producing over 10 0.06 metric gigatons of CO2 emissions, more than double the United States. Now, before we dive further into these numbers, I wanted to provide a couple of facts that are very important to realize. Number one, China, of course, is the most populated country in the world, having over 1.4 billion people living in China. That is four times the amount of people currently living in the United States of America. In addition to that, China is the global manufacturer for products around the world. We all know that if you take a look at your daily household items in your house, everything from your coffee machines to your dishes to your tables, so many of the products that many people use around the world originate in China. So China has a very important role in the world because it produces so many of the things that we use on a daily basis. So it makes sense that China's carbon footprint would be a lot larger than other Western countries. However, what if we compare China's carbon footprint and we actually look at it on a per capita ratio? What would those numbers look like? Now, looking at that same data from the same report, we can see that China on a per capita ratio emitted 7.05 metric tons. Now that is actually less than half of what the United States is emitting on a per capita ratio. Look at this graph from Statistia, and this actually talks about the global disparity in carbon footprints. Again, on a per capita ratio, the United States is the worldwide leader. I think many people would actually be surprised to see that Canada is a very close second to that. And even smaller countries like South Korea and Japan and Germany all rank higher than China on a per capita ratio. Now, the purpose of this video is not to say that Michael Pompeo is lying about China. There's no doubt about it. China is the world's largest polluter. However, I believe that China is doing some incredible things to reduce its carbon footprint, and that's the side of the story that I also want to share so that we can get a better and clear understanding of China. For example, in response to Michael Pompeo's tweet, I actually sent him a message back and I said, China has also lifted 800 million people out of poverty. They planted 122 million trees alone in 2019. They're the world leader in electricity from renewable energy sources and the largest electronic car market in the world. Care to share both sides of the story and how China is changing? Since Michael Pompeo is not sharing those sides of the story, I'm going to help him out and let's start looking into those numbers. Now from this report from Carbon Brief, we can see that one third of the world's new vegetation is coming from China and India. In fact, if you look at a graph from afforestation, now afforestation is actually meaning that you're planting trees in a place where there were no trees planted before, we can see that China is the worldwide leader in this. And it comes as part of China's plan to plant at least 84,000 square kilometers of trees, 
which is equivalent to the size of Ireland. Think about that fact for a second. China is planting trees and creating a new forest the size of the country of Ireland in an effort to reduce its carbon footprint. And how are they doing this? This effort started in 2018 when China reassigned 60,000 soldiers from the People's Liberation Army to start planting trees. Now this is just one example of how China is using its military to actually reinvest in its own country. Now when it comes to producing electricity from renewable energy sources, China again is the worldwide leader in the amount of energy produced. In 2017, over 36% of China's energy came from renewable energy sources. And it's really important to note, China's government has lifted over 700 million people out of poverty into the middle class. As these hundreds of millions of people now get into the middle class, their carbon footprint is going to increase and the need for energy is only going to increase in China. That is why China's government has really made you know, producing renewable energy a very important part moving forward because not only do they re realize that they need to reduce their carbon footprint, they also realize that they need to sustain a, you know, a reliable source of energy for the people. As the people are continuing to increase and more people are coming into the middle class, these renewable energy sources are going to be very vital for China's continued success. Now, another area to reduce your carbon footprint is electronic vehicles. And again, China is leading the world in this category. Now, in this graph, we can see that in 2019, there were approximately over 7 million electronic vehicles available and well over half of those between battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, China has roughly 3.4 million or almost 50% of the global electronic car market. What's really interesting to note as well is that not only is China embracing electric cars, they're actually building the infrastructure around this. Let's take a look at some more data. Now in this graph, we look at the publicly accessible slow charging stations for electronic vehicles, and we can see that China has 52% of the world's market share. When it comes to fast charging stations that are publicly accessible, China has over 80%. But China's commitment to electric vehicles does not just start at the individual level. It also goes to the government and to public transportation. About half a million electric buses are in circulation, most of which are in China. The bus fleets in a number of city centers in China are nearly fully or fully electrified and contribute to improving the air quality. Now, after presenting both sides of the story, I think we get a better accurate look into what is actually happening in China in regards to its pollution. Is China the biggest polluter in the world? Absolutely it is. But again, I brought up those two point of context. The number one fact, it's the most populated country in the world. Number two, it is also the manufacturing hub of the entire world. Both of these factors largely contribute to why China has such a large carbon footprint. But the second half of that story that we presented in this video details what China is doing to help reduce its carbon footprint. The United States, for example, we pulled out of the Paris Agreement largely because Donald Trump said that he does not believe in global warming, he does not believe that he needs to prioritize climate change, and he actually said that the United States economy is more important than this Paris Agreement. On the contrast, China remains committed to the Paris Agreement, and it should, because again, it is the world's largest polluter in the world. However, recent reports coming out of China said that the country is on track to reach these goals by the end of 2030. Now, to answer that question before, why does Secretary of State Michael Pompeo only tell half of the story? Well, unfortunately, his goal for that is to make sure that Americans only see the negative sides of China. I think that every country in the world has some negative points my home country of America included, but of course every country does have some positive points as well. And I think that's something that we need to really present here. Unfortunately for the United States, their goal right now is to make sure that American citizens view China in the most negative way possible. And unfortunately, it's working. Take a look at this recent tweet that someone sent out. America is falling behind China, and if we do not crush them in the next 10 to 15 years, we will fall permanently behind. That was the reason why Germany had to be destroyed. Now, I was baffled when I saw this comment on Twitter because this is, takes you into the mindset of a typical American that doesn't understand what's actually happening in China and only listens to mainstream media. And ultimately, I had to respond to this. This is the problem with America. We have people brainwashed that we must crush China. It's not about crushing competition. It's about working together. USA economic growth over the last 30 years would be nothing without China. When the US and China work together, the world wins. 
Now, this is a common thing that I say in many of my videos, and it remains true, and it remains really the main focus of this channel is trying to bring these two countries together. Now, I know that the United States government right now is at a very interesting time. We're just two months away from the 2020 presidential election, and China has become a very hot topic for, for both presidential candidates, both the left and the right. But the reality is, is that moving forward, I want American citizens and I want people around the world to better understand China. China plays a significant role in all of our lives and we have to better understand what's actually happening in the country. You need to listen to qualified people that are on the ground and have real life experience in China. Because if you only listen to mainstream media, you're only going to get one half of the story. And as we've proven in this video, that's not going to give you the real truth into China. Now, everybody, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. If you are interested to learn more, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and drop me a comment down below. And if you're interested in helping out this channel and supporting, there's some links down in the description below that you can also do that. I'm looking forward to bringing you some more live stream videos and some upcoming sessions. Thank you again, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.